Morning everyone. This morning, uh, over my comments over coffee, I want to talk about facing and dealing with challenges that we're uncomfortable with, we don't know what to do with, and that seems really, really huge and undoable. And in a lot of cases, uh, I'm talking, for my students, I'm talking about your studying. So let's talk about dealing and facing these types of challenges. Uh, to begin with, Ninja, my little foster fell, wants to say hi. Hey Ninja. He says good luck as well for all of you who's studying for exams. Squeak also says good luck, but he's a little bit less interested, as you can see. He's just sleeping on mom's bag. He's not quite as interested. Ninja is a lot more interested in your studying. Yes, well, he thinks so. Okay, so let's talk about this. So when we deal with problems that we are uncomfortable with, or when we face problems that we're uncomfortable with, it's... It's kind of like standing in front of a wall, a really big wall that we can't see over and we can't see past, you know, back and forth. It's just this massive wall. And we have to break this wall down. You know, if the objective is to break the wall down, the question is, how on earth do you do that? You know, it's so big, it's so huge, and here you are. And I think, you know, for, for, for a large percentage of the time, we spend us, our time walking back and forth from you know from one end of this wall to the other literally just thinking oh my gosh this wall is so huge it's so big what am i going to do how am i going to break this wall how am i going to get you know how am i going to get this wall broken how am i going to get through this thing and we can do this for days you know we can do this for weeks we don't you know it, it's not intended that that we're necessarily procrastinating or, or, or whatever we're just looking at it going I, I don't know what to do right i don't know what to do i don't know what to do how do i do this it's too much it's too big i don't know what to do i don't know what to do and um you know, the reality is, you know, you need, you need to take a hammer to that wall and start breaking it. You need to take a hammer to that wall and, and, and smash that thing. Um, and the problem is that when you pick up the hammer for the first time, there's a very good chance that nothing's going to happen, right? There's a really good chance that when you hit that wall with the hammer, nothing's going to happen, you know. Uh, nothing's going to break. Nothing's going to happen. And the problem then is that we sit back and think, oh, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't do this. This is a sign. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be able to break this wall. This is, you know, this is never going to work. This isn't going to happen. And then we sit back and we leave it and we go back and forth and we walk, you know, we walk up and down uh, around this wall again. We go, I can't do it. I can't do it. Then we pick up the hammer again because now we think, you know, the deadline's coming and exams are coming and I have to do something. So we pick up the hammer again and, and, and we hammer it once more. We, 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 you know, we smash the wall once more and still nothing happens. And then we put the hammer down again and we're walking up and fight. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. This is never going to work. I can't do this. I'm not strong enough. Uh, it's too tall. I can't see that. And in a lot of cases, the reality is that that wall is only going to start cracking by, you know, maybe the 10th or 11th time that we hit that wall with the hammer, uh, it's going to start eventually cracking. And then we'll start seeing, oh, okay, wait a minute, something is happening, right? Something is happening. It may take 20 times for you to smash that wall with the hammer before a brick falls out of it. And when that happens, at least now you can see through to the other side. Uh, of the wall and go, okay, there's hope. I, I know what I'm aiming for. I can kind of see that something's happening. And now you have to just keep hitting that thing. The problem, you know, is that the wall is, is only going to start cracking when we've hit it 10 times. You know, on the 10th or 11th hit, the wall will start cracking. But if you don't hit it, you know, the first nine or 10 times, you're never going to get to number 11, right? Um, a really great example uh, a really great analogy that I like is from a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he, he's writing on, on how to change habits and the idea that changing habits in really small ways and little, you know, little things at a time is, is a really good way to do it. And the example he uses is um, melting ice. If, if you take an ice block and you put it outside, there's a certain temperature that that ice block is going to melt at. And all the degrees and all the temperatures and all the time in between, you can't see anything happening. You know, if you look at the ice block, it's not melting, it's not melting, it's not melting, it's not melting. And then all of a sudden it starts melting, right? But you weren't seeing anything happening. While something was happening inside that ice block and while it was slowly getting ready to melt, you couldn't see anything happening, right? But if you'd have shoved that ice block back in the freezer when you didn't see anything happening, nothing would carry on happening, right? We've got to leave that ice block out and we've got to keep looking at it and wait until the moment we see that. And sometimes the progress is invisible. Sometimes the progress is not going to be seen until quite a bit later. So when it comes to your studying, 
when it comes to stuff, I have so many students that tell me, you know, when I look at my studying or I look at something I have to do, it's so hard, I don't know what to do, and then I step away from it, and I like, it's just so pointless, and I can't do it. But the very fact that we stop doing it, the very fact that we walk away from it, and we just stand back, and we look at this thing, it just gets bigger and bigger, and the wall gets bigger and taller, and we don't know what to do with it. Sometimes the only thing to do, or the only thing to do, is to walk up, take your hammer, and just smash that thing, you know. And in some cases, that's the only way that you find out you have the wrong hammer. You know, you might have the wrong hammer and someone, you know, comes along and says, actually, you've got the wrong tool for the job. Uh, you need something else, for example. Stupid, stupid analogy. But the point is, the only way that you're going to know whether or not you've got the right tools for the job, whether, you know, what skills you need, what technique you need, is when you actually start doing it. And then you kind of like, well, you know, this is, this is it now. At least I know the right way to do it. But we're never going to learn that. We're never gonna learn that if we just carry on walking up and down in front of that wall going, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, this is too big, this is too much for me. I can't do it, how can I do it? And if you expect that the very first time you pick that hammer up, everything's going to just fall apart in front of you. You know, by sheer force of determination, you just expect that you know, anything that's difficult is just gonna give way instantly the first time that you pick that hammer up, then you, know, you need to have a little chat with yourself and say, look, I need to have a little patience. Like, I need to slow down. This is not gonna happen the very first time that I pick that hammer up. But the fact that it doesn't happen the very first time you pick that hammer up does not mean that it's never gonna happen. It does not mean that this is never going to happen for you. It simply means that you've got to keep on hitting. And if you don't feel like you're making progress, and if you're feeling like, oh my goodness, this is insane, I don't know what I'm doing here, um, then go and ask for help. You know, go and find someone. For so many of my students, for example, they have lecturers. They have people that they can talk to. They have people that can help them, but they don't ask for help because they're going, I need to be able to do this on my own, or I don't want to ask for help, or, you know, I shouldn't have to ask for help, or it's not going to help me, or whatever the case is. But guys, pick up that hammer and start smashing. You know, for for some of my students, you know, for some of you, time is running out. You know, before before your first test and before stuff that you you know, like that's quite a deadline. Um, and as horrible as it feels, you know, as horrible as it feels to stand in front of that wall and smash it and nothing happens, you know that you've got to smash it a couple of times before you start seeing those cracks. And you know, however many times that is. It may be once, it may be twice, it may be three times, it may be ten times, but if you're not smashing that thing, you're never going to see cracks. So, my advice for the day, and my little extended, <laughs> extended comment over coffee today is, go pick up that hammer. Go pick up that sledgehammer and start smashing that wall. And if you don't see a crack, smash it again. And if you still don't see a crack, you smash it again. And you just keep smashing until you see those cracks. Keep at it.